What's going on, y'all? It's TKJ. Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate y'all for stopping by, man. Today, I'm doing a realistic rebuild of the Cleveland Cavaliers who lost in the first round of the playoffs to the New York Knicks. The goal is to win a championship within the first three seasons. If I can't do it during that time, then the video won't end until eventually I do. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't, man. We're on the road to 2K and we're almost there. So if you guys could help me out with that, I'd really appreciate it. But anyways, man, without any further ado, it's time to get into this video. Let's get it. So I'm not gonna lie, man. I've been holding off on doing this video for a while now. If you guys watch my videos or even if you play my league yourself, I'm sure you guys know that 2k sim absolutely loves the cleveland cavaliers by like year two darius garland's getting mvp the Cavs are winning championships i mean it's kind of like a do they really need me type of situation you feel me so it's not really the most realistic man but here's what i'm thinking so i'm gonna go ahead and boost the difficulty settings up to 60 i normally have this at a flat 50 just standard 2k sliders but yeah man hopefully this increase will make it a little bit more difficult to win a title i'm pretty sure i did this for my atlanta hawks rebuild as well just because that's another team that 2k really loves in sim i'm just trying to keep these videos as realistic as i can so hopefully this will help out with that but anyways man let's go ahead and take a look at the rotation here at the one we got darius garland 23 years old fifth overall pick in 2019 didn't have the best start to his career now actually his only season at vanderbilt he missed most of the year due to a knee injury so when he came into the league man he was a little bit rusty didn't have a great rookie campaign but since then has really turned into one of the more promising young guards in the league i mean this season 22 points three rebounds eight assists one steal shooting 41 percent from deep man the Cavs just re-signed him he's going to be making up to 44 m's by the time he's 27 in 2027 and honestly man it's worth the price tag it goes without saying Darius Garland is going to be safe for this entire video then we got Donovan Mitchell who the Cavs got from the Utah Jazz this past offseason they gave up a whole lot man they gave up Colin Sexton Lori Markin and Oche Abaji three first round picks in 2025 27 and 29 and then also two pick swaps in 26 and 28 so a whole lot to give up for Donovan Mitchell, man. But obviously, he's one of the best shooting guards in the league. I mean, this season, 28 points, four rebounds, four assists, two steals, you know, shooting 39% from deep, which is really nice. It's a bit of an undersized backcourt, you know, with Mitchell being 6'1 and Darius Garland being 6'1 as well. But still, man, if you want to talk about playmaking, this is one of the better backcourts in the league, without a doubt. We got Mitchell on the books for the next two seasons, possibly three if he picks up his player option when he's 28 years old. But even if he declines that, man, best believe I'm going to bring him back no matter what. Because like I said, I think he's a great fit with Darius Garland and he also fits the timeline man 26 years old while garland is i think 23 so i want them to grow together in this league man i'm really excited about that backcourt duo then we got another young guy here in isaac okoro now he was the fifth overall pick in 2020 and um has been okay you know he's been solid at times shown flashes since he got into the league six points this season three rebounds one assist one steal obviously the defensive impact is his main thing but the three-point shot is something that has to come along for him 36 percent from deep this season that's a step in the right direction if he can do that then he can definitely be our small forward of the future if not we might look to upgrade him you know taking a look at his contract he's got a team option for next season obviously we're going to pick that up and then i think the year after that we can still do a qualifying offer so i'm definitely going to keep a core around for a little bit but i'm not convinced that he's our small forward of the future then we got evan mobley who is really like the third part to that foundation of the future you know darius garland donovan mitchell and evan mobley that's kind of the core that i want to keep together no matter what in this video mobley is 21 years old third overall pick in 2021 and has been looking really good man 16 points nine rebounds three assists this. the three-point shot still not really a thing in fact it actually went down this season to 22 percent but still man when it comes to big man he's one of the most versatile defenders in the league he can defend at all three levels he can switch on the guards he's really good at help defense as well he really has such a big impact when it comes to the defensive side of the ball so i'm super excited about seeing how he's going to progress and hopefully the offense will come along not like it needs a whole lot of help i mean bro's averaging 16 points on a team with darius garland and donovan mitchell that's pretty good but yeah if he could actually start to knock down some more shots that would really just be a bonus but anyways man at the five you got jared allen now he's 25 years old the really cool thing about this starting lineup is they can all grow together man assuming we can keep them all now with that being said man i don't really know if i like the fit of jared allen here in cleveland maybe it's a hot take maybe it's an unpopular opinion you guys can let me know but personally man i would really like the idea of evan mobley at the five for us because i really do like versatile skilled mobile centers and obviously jared allen isn't that and i also prefer for one of my front court players to be able to knock down some threes you know that way we can get some more floor spacing obviously jared allen doesn't do that and evan mobley doesn't do that either so don't get me wrong i do think jared Allen is a great player I mean he made an all-star game two seasons ago and he went to Texas bro I say this in every single video but I also went to Texas I love me some Jared Allen I just don't know if I love the fit here in Cleveland you guys let me know in the comment section what you think about it because I'm super curious but yeah man if we end up keeping Allen it wouldn't be the worst thing especially because his contract isn't that big he's making a flat 20 for the next three seasons man that's definitely a good deal and I am going to keep him around for the first few seasons man but if we're at year three and we haven't won a championship by then Jared Allen might be someone who gets traded taking a look at the bench we got Karis LeVert now he's on an expiring 
expiring deal and it's kind of hard to gauge just how much value he would have in free agency taking a look at his stats this season 21 points four rebounds four assists one steal he shot 39 percent from deep like those numbers look pretty solid but like i don't really think he's good enough to start on competing teams he could be a spark plug off the bench but i mean he's not really the most efficient shooter either so i don't really know what to think about karis levert man i'm gonna see how much money he's asking for if he's asking for anything less than 10 m's then i probably will bring him back but if he's asking for something crazy like in the mid to late teens then we might have to let him walk it just is what it is then we got ricky rubio who just hasn't been able to stay healthy the past two seasons man super unfortunate because i mean he has been actually solid when he's on the floor but yeah 34 games last season 33 this season he's 32 years old and he's got two more years left on his deal if i do want to make some upgrades to this team whether it's a starting lineup or the bench i probably will have to use ricky rubio's contract as salary filler so i doubt he's going to be on the team much longer the same goes for jetty osmond you know he's 28 years old not really a big part of the rotation and he does have a team option for next season a little bit under 7 m's man we're probably going to pick that up and then trade him just so that way we can make some upgrades then we got robin lopez who is 35 years old the old man of the group on an expiring deal 74 overall not a whole lot to say here it says he shot 50 percent from deep this season he actually went two for four as you can see over here uh let's go to find that yeah two for four so he's not much of a three-point shooter man and while we do have jared allen as our starting five i definitely want a backup five who can space the floor because i do think it's important to have at least one big man who can do that that guy used to be kevin love but he got bought out at the trade deadline so yeah i'm not going to bring back robin lopez man i'm definitely going to replace him with someone who can provide a little bit more floor spacing anyways though let's go ahead and breeze past the rest of these guys here because y'all say i talk way too much i had somebody say in my comment section that i'm the king of yapping uh which is pretty funny i'm not gonna lie i do a lot of talking man part of the realistic rebuilds man is this section right here where i do a complete breakdown of the whole roster i just think you gotta have context when you're doing a realistic rebuild so that's why i do these breakdowns it's not gonna be for everybody man but it is what it is anyways though howell netto is on an expiring deal 31 years old we got ricky rubio we got howell netto as our backup point cards i probably won't bring back either of them next season man i definitely want to upgrade that and get a better backup point card then we got lamar stevens 25 years old undrafted guy team option on this upcoming season i probably will pick that up but like he's gonna have to progress in order to carve out a role and i doubt he's gonna do that because i don't think his ceiling is too high here in 2k then we got dean wade who actually is on a little bit of a deal here so i probably will use him as salary filler as well he actually can knock down some threes you know i was talking about getting a front court player who can space the floor dean wade could be that but he's a 73 overall man no disrespect but i definitely want to get a better option in them then we got danny green one of the older guys on the team 35 years old came over from memphis you gotta imagine he's gonna retire this offseason and even if he doesn't it's not like he's gonna have a role on this team either we also got dylan windler who is 26 years old first round pick in 2019 he's pretty old for a fourth year guy man he spent a lot of time in college so unfortunately i don't think he's gonna progress much more here in 2k he's not really a part of our plans as well and finally our last guy is sam merrill who's 27 years old another really old fourth year guy and it's kind of the same situation man 71 overall i doubt he's gonna progress much more so i'm not really worried about him but anyways man that's a look at the rotation let's go ahead and take a look at the three-year game plan starting with next season for your number one man i do want to upgrade my starting small forward i like isaac okoro i think he's solid but if we want to be competitive right now then i think that's the spot that we really need to upgrade now granted i'm not gonna have a whole lot of stuff to work with because we gave up a lot of first round picks to get donovan mitchell so i'm not gonna force him man if i can find a trade package that makes sense and makes us better then i definitely will do that but if not i'm cool with keeping isaac okoro for season number two i just want to improve my bench you know i do limit myself to three trades per season two trades per off season just to keep it realistic so i won't be able to do everything i want in year number one but by year two i definitely want to have a better bench because i think that's a weakness for this team and ever season number three man i just want to decide on jared allen like i said earlier man i don't really like the idea of having a front court where neither player can knock down threes i mean if we're in year three and evan mobley shooting like league average from deep then hey there's no problem there you know i could just keep that duo together but if he's not and we're struggling to win a championship then jared allen might be the guy on the move it just is what it is anyways man that's a look at the three-year game plan and the nuggets already won a championship as you guys know beating the heat in five games the Cole Jokic got finals mvp shout out to him all right man so we had the 26 pick in the draft but it did go to the pacers as a part of a karis avert trade speaking of which man we're gonna try to bring him back here in free agency we're gonna do a little one-on-one -on -one team option on the second season nine and a half m's i think that sounds pretty good to me and it sounds good to him too cool and i'm also gonna bring in jay crowder just on a one-year deal he's 33 years old probably gonna regress a little bit but still i think it'd be a nice backup small forward power forward for us someone who can knock down some threes and defend so 5.25 for one year it looks like we got a deal and really that's it for free agency man taking a look at player progression we got donovan mitchell staying put at a 92 Darius garland up three to a 90 and evan mobley up four to a 90 man that's actually pretty insane we got three guys in the 90 club so we'll definitely take that jared allen went up one to an 85 Isaac Okoro up three to a 79. I still think he could be solid for us, man. But again, if I can find that upgrade, then I definitely will. 
Um, taking a look at the rest of this, we got a couple red arrows here. Ricky Rubio being the biggest fall off, down two to a 73 again. I'm looking for a backup point guard either way, so it's not really that big of a deal. But yeah, man, either way, I feel really good about this team. Let's head into season one and see if we can make some noise. All right, man, so it didn't take me too long to realize we actually can't make too many upgrades here to our starting lineup because we do not have any first round picks that we're able to trade, at least here in 2K, because it only goes up to 2028. 20, I would have loved to have gone after someone like, I don't know, maybe OG Ananobi. I was thinking like Isaac Okoro and two first round picks, something like that. But since we don't have access to any of our first round picks, man, there's no way we can pull off a trade. So it looks like the starting lineup is going to stay the same. All I can do now is just try to upgrade this bench. Let's go ahead and get into it. Again, man, I'm kind of limited with trades here because I don't have any first round picks I can use, but I'm going to try to get Thomas Bryant as my backup center. I said I want someone who can space the floor. Well, Thomas Bryant can knock down some threes. He shot above 40% from deep in three the last four seasons so we'll definitely take that and i think washington would just take dean wade because they need like a backup small forward power forward and then they'll just take some second round picks man if they're looking at the reset button and it seems like they are because they want to move on from bradley beal according to a lot of reports then i think this would be a good deal for them so let's go ahead and see if they will say yes to this and they will thomas bryant welcome to the team so the bench is looking pretty decent right now we got a backup shooting guard in karis avert a backup small forward in jetty osmond a backup power forward in jay crowder and a backup center in thomas bryant we still need our backup point guard because right now that's ricky ruby 74 overall if i can upgrade that man then i think i'll be good with this so let me get back into it and again man i don't have a whole lot to work with here i'm gonna try dylan windler and three second round picks it's actually the last picks that i have left because again i can't move on from any of these first rounders i'm gonna try to get jake milton from the jazz man that they don't really need him you know they've got kyrie irving apparently they got colin sexton jordan clarkson oche abaji like they got a lot of guards man and they are still a rebuilding team at the end of the day so i think they would take the second round picks milton would be a solid backup point guard for me man i don't need a whole lot out of him because we got darius garland and donovan mitchell obviously as our starting backcourt so let's go ahead and see if we can pull off this trade and we can there we go and i think that's it for year one man we got the same starting lineup here darius garland donovan mitchell isaac okoro evan mobley and jared allen now we got shake milton off the bench we got karis levert jay crowder thomas bryant and jetty osmond we didn't make any moves to the starting lineup but i mean guys were progressing so they should be better and then i definitely do think i upgraded the bench so i feel pretty good about this team man now again we do have the same difficulty up to 60 so it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge but honestly i feel like we can compete for a title this year let's go to sim this regular season and see how it plays out. So the sim difficulty definitely made it more of a challenge, man. We went 54 and 28, but honestly, that's good, man. I think that's pretty realistic. So Luka Doncic got MVP. Taking a look at the rest of this here, do we have anything that concerns us? Uh, does not look like it. All right, anything here for the Cleveland Cavaliers? Let's take a look at these All NBA teams. Um, Evan Mobley, All Defensive Second Team. Would like to see that but it looks like that's it for us. So he finished as a number three seed, which sounds about right, man. I could see the Cavs making that jump this upcoming season, so I'm definitely not mad at that. I think it was the right decision to boost up that sim difficulty. Taking a look at the stats, Darius Garland led the way, 24 points, three rebounds, 11 assists, one steal. I mean, he was doing his thing, man. 46% shooting from deep, that's insane. Donovan Mitchell, 44%. Um, he was right up there with uh, Darius Garland, 24 points, four rebounds, and six assists. Taking a look at Evan Mobley as well. I mean, he did his thing, 17 points, 12 rebounds, three assists, one steal, two blocks. But uh, what was the three-point shooting looking like, man? Yeah, it's it's an upgrade. I mean, it definitely is better. He's in the 30 range, so we'll definitely take that. But I really do need to see that go up to at least league average if I am going to keep Jared Allen. Because again, I don't want two front court players who can't knock down threes. It just is what it is. Speaking of Jared Allen, man, 13 points, 10 rebounds, one assist. Super efficient from the floor as well, so we'll take that. And uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much a look at this team. Make sure to pause it if you want to check out the rest of these stats here. But overall, I feel pretty good about this team. Let's go ahead and get into this playoff run, see what we can do. I think for year three, realistically, I'd be happy with a conference finals appearance. Like that's probably the best case scenario, but at least make it out the first round, man. That's like the bare minimum. If we can do that, then it's an improvement from last season. Anyway, speaking of the first round, we're going up against the Indiana Pacers. Taking a look at the matchup, they got Tyrese Halliburton, Benedict Mather, and Kelly Oubre Jr. now in the mix. Jairus Walker and Miles Turner. It's a pretty good team, man, but I do think we're better than them. Let's, uh, let's try to make it out this first round, bros. We win game one, okay. Uh, we're up two to nothing now, three to nothing. Are we gonna sweep them? No, we're not. Gentlemen, sweep then. Uh, there we go. Okay. Hey, man, we made it out the first round. Progress, progress compared to last season. But now we're going up against the Boston Celtics, and uh, this is going to be tough. They got Malcolm Brogdon, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, and Robert Williams III. Let's go ahead and see how this uh, how this goes down, man. But before we do that, I am going to shorten the rotation uh, preemptively here just because I feel like we're going to need to. So I guess I'm taking away minutes from Jetty Osmond. Yeah, that's pretty easy, actually. So we're going to do it like that, and I think that looks pretty good to me, man. Yeah, let's go ahead and see if that's enough to beat the Boston Celtics. It's going to be tough, but let's find out as we lose game one. Okay, 
Uh, we're down two to nothing now. Down 3-0. Are you kidding me, bro? Hey, I tried to make it realistic. That was the goal of this video. Um, was to uh, boost the settings and make sure that it's uh, it's not just usual 2K sim. You know, just favoring the Cavs. So this is what I wanted, man. This is what I wanted. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm getting beat down right now, man. Can we at least avoid getting swept? That would be ideal. Okay, okay. It's three to one now. Uh, three to two. Can we force game seven? No, we can't. Tough, man tough but hey again i think that's a pretty realistic year one for the cleveland cavaliers uh is this the celtics actually making the finals so that makes me feel a little bit better and they won it all okay beating the pelicans in six games jason tatum finals mvp shout out to him not a bad year one man we made it to the second round gave the celtics a little bit of a fight i'm pretty happy with that we do have the 27th pick in this upcoming draft so that's nice let's go to draft night and see what we can do with it so like i say in every single video man i don't know a whole lot about the 2024 class i pretty much just go off of which players do well in sim and from what i've seen in previous videos Usman and Dai turns out to be pretty nice. And if I do end up trading Jared Allen and moving Evan Mobley to the five, then Dai might be our power forward of the future. They're saying his ceiling could be the Montes bonus, man. You know what? I'll take that. Especially with what? Pick number 27? That's a pretty easy decision, man. Welcome to the team. So taking a look at free agency, we do got to bring back Jay Crowder, man, but he's 34 years old. I think I would rather just have Kyle Anderson. You know, he's a little bit younger, 30 years old. So I don't think he'll regress as much. Let's try to make him our backup power forward instead. We'll do a 5.5 two-year deal. I think that sounds pretty good to me. And it sounds good with him too. Cool. And that's all we did for free agency, man. We did have Isaac Okoro as a restricted free agent. So if any team gave him an offer, we would have had to have matched it. Luckily, that didn't happen, though. So he's making a little bit under 12 M's this season. He'll be an unrestricted free agent next offseason, though. So I don't know how much money he's going to want or how much money we're going to have left to give him. So that might be a little bit tough, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But right now, though, man, the starting five is looking pretty filthy. Evan Mobley is actually our best player now. He went up four to a 94, which is pretty crazy. Donovan Mitchell up one to a 93. Darius Garland up three to a 93. Jared Allen up one to an 86 as a up two to an 81 and even the bench man nobody went down which is really good to see ricky rubio wasn't in the rotation so that's fine but yeah like our actual second unit we didn't get any regression thomas Bryant even went up one to a 77 we'll definitely take that man same starting lineup man we got darius garland donovan mitchell isaac okoro evan mobley and jared allen off the bench now we got kyle anderson we got shake milton karis Savert, thomas Bryant, and jetty osmond i don't know if we'll win it all this season man but this year i definitely want to try to make the finals let's go ahead and get into it and actually, man, I got midway through Sim in the season and I realized I can re-sign Donovan Mitchell right now. I might as well do it right now before some other teams can offer him deals in the offseason. So let's try to get this thing done, man. 35.99 for three seasons. I think that sounds pretty good and it sounds good with them too. There we go. I just wanted to show that real quick, but let's get back to Simming. So we took a big step forward this season, man. 64 and 18, pretty insane. But honestly, not that unrealistic considering we got so many guys who are 90 plus overall. Anyways, Luka Doncic gets MVP. Still no Darius Garland MVP. I feel like we get that in almost every sim, but oh well. Let's take a look at the rest of this year. Bronny James, rookie of the year. That's pretty cool. Um, anything that concerns us, we did get coach of the year, JB Biggerstaff. Shout out to him. We didn't get exec of the year. That's the Boston Celtics. So I guess they're pretty good this year as well. But anyways, let's take a look at the all NBA teams. Do we have anything here that concerns us? Darius Garland all nba 13 that's good to see and evan mobley here as well shout out to him okay um he's probably gonna make a defensive team yep all defensive second team we're the number one seed in the eastern conference we'll definitely take that let's go ahead and take a look at these stats here darius garland led the way 26 points three rebounds 12 assists one steal donovan mitchell nice little 24 three and six evan mobley 18 points 12 rebounds four assists and two blocks but um how did he shoot from deep man because again that's a big thing for me and actually this is pretty solid 34 percent we round up around here it's going up man so i think i am good with keeping that front court together because again it's not like jared allen's making a whole lot of money so he's a pretty good budget deal speaking of allen he's doing his thing as well man i mean karis lavert is looking pretty solid off the bench yeah bro this is a really good team isaac okoro nothing too crazy i mean the defensive impact i'm assuming is his biggest contribution um but what about from deep man i mean 39 percent we'll take that bro it's just a matter of how much money does he want this offseason that's the big thing but like we'll worry about that this offseason man let's go ahead and find out how we do in the playoffs here we're going up against the philadelphia 76ers in the first round taking a look at the matchup they got james harden tyrese maxi tobias harris isaac amundsen at the four evan mobley bro you better go crazy here and then they also have joel and beat of course it's uh it's a pretty good team man but we should definitely go crazy with uh evan mobley at the four so we win that first game okay it's one to one all right two to one us let's go up three one boys there we go gentlemen sweep gentlemen sweep man we love to see it all right so now we're going up against the atlanta hawks in the second round let's take a look at this matchup they got trey young dejounte murray aj griffin jalen johnson and demontis a bonus at the five 
um that's uh that's pretty crazy bro yeah they got themselves a squad here in atlanta i'm not gonna lie i'm a little bit worried for this one but um let's go ahead and give it a shot here as we're gonna go ahead and um, shorten this rotation right now bro yeah i am uh pretty terrified of this team i'm not gonna lie to you like um that looks pretty good to me i think yeah i think that's good all right is that enough to beat the Atlanta Hawks in the second round, man? They're the five seed at the end of the day, so it's not like they're that good. But you never know with 2K Sim. Um, is it's one to one now? Okay, we're up two to one, uh, three to one us. And um, please, bro, no game seven. No game seven, man. What can I even do? I don't even know, man. What can I do? Um, Karis Levert is on fire. Like, man, this is pretty brutal. This is pretty brutal. I'm not going to lie. We're going to knock it down like that, I think. And I want to give some more minutes to Jared Allen. And maybe one more for Isaac Okoro. Is that enough to get out of this game here, man? Can we win game seven? It's at home, like in Cleveland. Can we please pull this thing off, man? As um, it's kind of back and forth. They're hanging around. I think we're in a good spot, man. Please don't blow this thing. Please don't blow this thing. Okay. We made it out, man. Wow. Just barely. But we're here in the Eastern Conference Finals. And we got a revenge series, man. We're going up against the Boston Celtics. They got Malcolm Brogdon, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Darius Baisley now starting at the four instead of Al Horford. He's probably retired by now. I'm not too sure. But then they also have Robert Williams the third. Let's, uh, let's get into this thing, man. As we win game one. Okay. Uh, we're up two to nothing now. Okay. I was going to say, we're not going to sweep them, man. Two to two. Come on, boys. No, bro. Not like this, man. Honestly, there's not a whole lot else I can do like i think this is about the best that i can do man i'm gonna maybe go ahead and uh bro like shorten this just a little bit more i'm a little nervous about this this is probably the wrong decision but i really need to get some more minutes for my uh my main guys like i think that looks pretty decent is that enough to win two games in a row here let's just go ahead and send this regularly um and we lost bro are you kidding me man the celtics have done it again to us man and as we go to the finals they actually won it all once again beating the pelicans same thing as last year that's so brutal bro but again i'm trying to keep this thing realistic i mean we made the conference finals in year two that's not too bad year three though we definitely have to get this ring bro let's go ahead and get into it so isaac okoro is expecting almost 26 m's bro he's got no offers luckily so i'm gonna try to save some money man because we're not gonna have a whole lot left after this also evan mobley is a restricted free agent so if some team gives him an offer i gotta try to match it which is also going to be tough. Um, bro, if we could do like a 19.75, I would be pretty happy with that. Um, in fact, let's make it a three-year and try to save a little bit more money here, man. Like 19.5. Will he say yes to this? It looks like he will. Cool. I'm also going to try to bring back Shake Milton. 5.5, two years. That's an easy one. And I'll bring back Thomas Bryant as well on a nice little 4.75. Cool. And there it is, man. I knew Mobley would get an offer from someone. It's the Los Angeles Clippers. Three years, 121.6 hams, bro. I mean, we got to match it. So it is what it is. All right, man. So I looked around the league and we're actually the seventh most expensive team in the NBA. But hey, it's going to be worth it if we can win a title this year. Taking a look at player progression. Evan Mobley up two to a 96, man. He just keeps going up like Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell. They've kind of stayed put. But apparently Evan Mobley is that guy, which is really nice. Jared Allen stays put as well. That's fine. Isaac Okoro up two to an 83. We like to see that. And uh, still, man, no regression at all, which is definitely a good sign. Honestly, man, I'm not sure what I want to do with year three here because we are progressing. Like if we just go in and send this thing, I'm pretty sure we could compete for a title. But maybe I should make a big trade. I'm not too sure, man. I'm going to look around, see what I can find. But let's go ahead and get into it. And you know what, man? It's going to seem boring, but I don't think I'm going to make any changes to the starting lineup. Trust me, I was looking around for a while and I just couldn't find anything that made sense. Like one person I thought about was Jonathan Kaminga. It seems like he could really benefit from a change in scenery. Golden State hasn't had an all-star caliber center in forever. So bringing in Jared Allen, I think would be nice. You know, they could move Andrew Wiggins to the four. They could have Moses Moody start at the three. I think it would work out for them. But for us, man, we got Isaac Okora at the three, who's six foot six. Jonathan Kaminga at the four, who's six foot seven. I don't really love it, man. So I think we're going to move on from that. I also thought about a LeBron James reunion, you know, bringing him back to Cleveland where he can retire. I think that would be pretty cool. They could obviously just move Anthony Davis to the four, have Jared Allen at the five. But just contract wise, I couldn't make it work. And also, that would significantly shrink our championship window because obviously LeBron James is 40 years old. He's probably going to retire next season so do i really want to mortgage our future that much just to bring him back i don't really think so and i even thought about a guy like brandon ingram i mean the grizzlies need a starting center um because right now i guess that's luke Cornette. but honestly man i think this big four is too nasty to break up john morant jaron jackson jr brandon ingram and desmond bain as much as i want bi as my starting power forward man i don't want to mess up what they got going on so i'm going to leave that alone as well but yeah man those were just a few things i was thinking about you know it's probably going to seem like it's a boring video i took the safe route i didn't make a big trade to the starting lineup but it's not for a lack of trying 
dog, man. I did my research. I looked around. I just couldn't find anything that made sense. And at the end of the day, this is a realistic rebuild. So if I can't find a trade that I like, man, I'm not going to force it just for the sake of doing something. Anyways, I just wanted to go ahead and show that real quick. But let's go ahead and try to upgrade this bench, though. I'd be cool with doing this trade, man. Karis Levert and Usman and Daye for Derek White. He's here on the Chicago Bulls, who so don't really need them. They already have their backcourt of the future, Modest Muzelas and Brody James. I think that's really nice. So they don't really need Derek White, man. I think they'd rather have Usman and Daye, a nice young power forward who can just go alongside those guys that I was talking about. So I think that makes sense for them. I would also get them Karis Levert, who I don't really want to give up, but I would have to for salary filler. It is what it is, man. We would have Shake Milton as our backup point guard, Derek White, our backup shooting guard. Kyle Anderson can play the three and the four for us, and then we still have Thomas Bryant. So I think it makes sense. Will they say yes to this deal, man? Let's find out. They're saying no. Okay. I'll give you guys two second round picks as well. Is that enough to get this thing done? And it is. Derek White, welcome to the team. Like I said, man, it's nothing too crazy, but I think it is realistic. The starting lineup is still the same. But I will say this, man, if we don't win a championship this year, best believe I'm coming back and I'm going to trade Jared Allen to move Evan Mobley to the five. Hopefully it doesn't come down to that, man, but it is something that I'll have to do because at some point I am going to have to make a change here. But anyways, we got Derek White off the bench now, Kyle Anderson, Shake Milton, Thomas Bryant, and Jetty Osmond still getting some PT. Just a little bit there to make it a 10-man rotation. At this point, man, it's championship or bust, so let's go ahead and sim this regular season and see how it plays out. So the boys are hooping this season, man. We went 64 and 18. We'll definitely take that. But again, it doesn't really matter if we don't win that championship. Luka Doncic MVP, I'm pretty sure for the third year in a row, right? I don't think anyone else has gotten it this sim. So uh, shout out to him. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of this year. Uh, Coach of the year, as you would expect. That's good to see. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of this year. LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, all NBA first team. That's a pretty crazy duo in Charlotte, man. Um, anyways, Darius Garland, all NBA second team. We like to see that. Evan Mobley, all NBA third team. Okay. Um, Evan Mobley, all defenses, second team. Yep, that all makes sense. Let's go ahead and get into these playoffs, man. So we're the top team in the Eastern Conference, man. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stats here, see what that is looking like. And uh, Darius Garland led the way, 25, 2, and 13. Yeah, man, still doing his thing. Um, Evan Mobley, still not much of a three-point shooter, man. Yeah, if we don't win a championship this year, best believe Jared Allen has to go, bro. I'm sorry, it's nothing personal. And actually, he's a free agent this offseason. I forgot about that. So we would re-sign him and do like a sign and trade essentially. But yeah, man, like I said, nothing personal. I love my Texas alums. Y'all know that. But it might not be the best fit here, man. So we'll see how that plays out. But anyways, make sure to pause these stats if you want to take a look at it, man. All I care about is this playoff run. So we're going up against the Miami Heat in the first round. They got Elliot Cadeau, Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Jared Vanderbilt, and Bam Adebayo. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm a little bit worried because I know Elliot Cadeau is a beast in sim. But let's get into it. So we win game one. Okay. Uh, we're up two to nothing now. Oh, is it going to be that easy? Um, yeah, it is going to be that easy. All right. That's a good sign, man, because that's a really good Heat team, at least just on paper. Um, the second round, though, this is going to be tough. The Charlotte Hornets, man. LaMelo Ball, Jordan Hawkins, Brandon Miller. Now in 92, bro. That's uh, that's pretty filthy. They also got Bull Bull and Mark Williams. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and shorten this rotation right now, bro, because I don't even want to mess around with this. We are going to knock this down to a uh, nine man. That's pretty easy to do. Just segue minutes from Jetty. So let's try to mess around with this, man. We're going to do um, a nice little 35. Yeah. And then get Isaac Okora up to 31. I think that's pretty good, man. Is that enough to beat the Charlotte Hornets? Let's go ahead and find out. Um, yeah, I was going to say I'm a little bit worried, man. Please don't go down 3-0. Are you kidding me? Are we really about to go down? Like, are we really about to get swept by this team, bro? This would be absolutely insane. Um, I probably shouldn't be doing that, getting rid of Thomas Bryant's minutes because we need a backup center. But it is what it is, bro. The boys need to play here. This is crazy, bro. Are we really about to get swept by them? Let's find out. Okay, so we win that game. Uh, it's 3-2. to two. Can we force a game 7? Yes, we can. Let's go SimCast, man. Can we come back from 3-0 to the Charlotte Hornets? That would be insane. Um, it's back and forth. They're looking pretty good, man. But I think we're going to do it. Are we really going to come back from down 3-0? Oh, my. What is happening with this menu here? I don't know what just happened, boys. But we won that game. Let's go. The Cleveland Cavaliers are still alive, man. Wow. Four straight wins against the Charlotte Hornets. That's pretty insane. And now we're going up against the Atlanta Hawks. Let's take a look at this matchup here. So they got Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, Chris Middleton now in the mix. How old is bro? He's got to be like 34, 35, bro. So that's pretty wild. They also got Aaron Gordon and DeMontis Sabonis. That's, um, that's an extremely scary team, man. Like you can argue that that team is even scarier than the Charlotte Hornets. I think they are. But let's go ahead and get into it here as we win game one. Okay, 
Uh, we're up two to nothing now. Honestly, bro, I can't even mess around with this rotation anymore. Like, I went ahead and uh, gave all the minutes to my starters, but we're here. We're here in the NBA Finals going up against the OKC Thunder. So they got Shea Gilgis Alexander, now a 96 overall. Yeah, he's that guy. They also got Josh Giddey, Ron Holland, John Collins now in the mix, which is interesting. And then they got Chet Holmgren. It's another good team, man, but I do think we're better than this squad here. Um, as we lose game one, come on, bro. Let's not do this, man. Honestly, like, what changes can I make, man? Like I was saying, I pretty much gave all the minutes to my guys here, bro. Um, Man, there's not much else that I could do. I can give just a little bit more to, like, Isaac Okoro, but that's about it, man. Can we make it out of this series? Let's go ahead and find out as we win that game. Okay, uh, down 3-1. to one. Please don't lose this thing. Are you kidding me? The OKC Thunder have won it all, led by Shea Gilgis Alexander. I'm sick to my stomach, man. I'm not gonna lie, man, that one hurt. I didn't think I'd be doing this video in season number four, but here we are. We got the 29th pick in the draft. Let's go to draft night and see what we can do. So it's just a bunch of auto generator guys at this point. Dana Scott apparently was number seven on the big board. So for him to still be here at 29 is pretty nice, man. 19 years old, 6'5". They're saying he could be true holiday. Let's go ahead and make that pick, man. Why not? Can we bring back Jared Allen, man? That is the big question. 37 M's. There's no way I'm doing that, man. I'm sorry. I can't do it, bro. Luckily, he has no offer. So let me try to save some money here. Let's see if he'll take 26.99 for three seasons, man. And it looks like he will. Cool. I'm not going to lie, though, Jared. It's time for you to get traded, my boy. I didn't want to do it. But at this point, I got to make a change to the starting lineup. It just is what it is. Maybe there's an upgrade for Isaac Okora out there. I'm not too sure. But I said it way at the beginning of the video, man. My gut instinct was that Jared Allen would not be the right fit for this team. I'm going to look around and see if we can pull off a trade, man. It should be easier now that we have a bigger contract here because uh, it used to be 20. So now it's 27. Let's not waste any time, man. Let's go to season four and see what we can do. So it's a bit of a drastic trade, man. But again, we're in season number four and we haven't won a title yet. So it's time to move on from Jared Allen. I'm going to try him, Shake Milton, and a first round pick for Chris Stapps for Zingas. Now the Wizards need to center pretty badly here. And they also don't really have a whole lot of good defenders. So I think it's time for them to get somebody who can really anchor their paint. Jared Allen would definitely be that for him. And Chris Stapps for Zingas for us, man. I think this would be a great fit. We can move Evan Mobley to the five, have Chris Stapps for Zingas at the four. Obviously, he can space the floor because he's been shooting above league average from deep for what the past four seasons now so we'll definitely take that again i would have loved to won a championship with our original starting five but man we're in season number four it's time to make a move i think this is a pretty good one will they say yes to this and they will there we go so the starting five is now darius garland donovan mitchell isaac okoro chris that's porzingis and evan mobley i think that's pretty filthy man the bench though we need some work we got Derek white we got thomas bryant kyle anderson but not much else so we got three guys off the bench right now that i feel good about if i can just get to a nine man rotation I think that'd be solid. So we got our point guard shooting guard in Derek White. We got our center in Thomas Bryant and we got our power forward in Kyle Anderson. I'm looking for a small forward man and if Isaac Okoro is a defensive minded guy, I definitely want someone who can come in off the bench and just be a shooter. So that's what I'm looking for here. And he's not really a pure shooter, but I guess Chris Dorte will do the trick, man. He shot 39% from deep last season. We'll definitely take that. And I think the Jazz will take Dana Scott. This is the guy that we got in this past year's draft, 29th overall. They're going to need some more guard play in the future, man, because right now they got Kyrie Irving, 34 years old. Obviously, he's not going to be around much longer. Longer, and they don't really have much else so i definitely think they'll take scott let's go to see if we can pull off this thing straight up man um we can't they want keontae johnson they'll give us a first round pick come on bro i'll just give you keontae johnson just for the sake of keeping this realistic here and they say yes so that's the team for year four man we got darius carlin donovan mitchell isaac okoro chris stats porzingis and evan mobley on the bench you got Derek white we got chris dorte thomas bryant and kyle anderson it's only a nine-man rotation, bro, but I think it's going to be fine. It's time to win a championship, man. In fact, it's long overdue. So let's go ahead and send this regular season and see how it plays out. So the boys are hooping once again, man. We went 64-18. and 18. Victor Amiyama MVP, not Luka Doncic, for the first time in this video. Uh, we did get coach of the year, as you would expect. That's good. Taking a look at the rest of this year, man. We got Evan Mobley, All-NBA second team um and nothing else i don't think yeah evan mobley all defensive first team but that's about it for us man we were the top team in the eastern conference once again but i mean at this point bro that means nothing to me like i don't really care about seeding any of this i just want to win this championship here's a look at the stats you guys can pause it if you want um but yeah i have a feeling this video is going to be very very long so uh you guys pause it if you want to check it out but uh, me man i'm going to go ahead and get into this thing right now so Let's go ahead and get started here. We're going up against the Bulls in the first round. Taking a look at the matchup, um, they actually got a good squad, bro. Bronny James, Anthony Simons, Zach Levine, Keegan Murray, and DeAndre Aiden. Let's uh, let's see if we can beat them, though. We're going to go ahead and take this game by game per usual. We win game one, okay. Uh, two to nothing. Um, two to one. Didn't think I'd sweep them. Three to one. Can we get a gentleman sweep? No, we can't. Please just no game seven, bro. There we go. Okay. 
So we're here in the second round going up against the Pacers. They got Tyrese Halliburton, and Terry Rozier, Isaiah Evans, Jairus Walker, and Mark Williams. Let's uh let's get into this thing, man. We're gonna take this game by game as we lose game one. Okay. Um, it's already a nine-man rotation, so I can't do a whole lot. Um, and yeah, bro. I'm gonna mess around with this a bit, but like I said, um, there's not a whole lot that I can do here. So we are gonna shorten this just a little bit. And I think that's pretty solid, man. Can we beat this team here? Let's go ahead and find out. As we're up three to two, please no game seven. There we go, okay. So we're in the conference finals and we're not going up against the Hornets. It's the Brooklyn Nets, the number six seed. Okay, they got Anthony Black, Mikhail Bridges. That's a really good backcourt duo. They also got Nazir Cunningham, Olivia Prosper, and Nas Reed. I mean, looking at the frontcourt, bro, we should be pretty dominant here. So let's try to win this thing and make it to the finals for the second year in a row. We're up one to nothing, uh, two to nothing now. Okay, two to one, that's fine. Three to one, gentlemen sweep. Gentlemen sweep, man. We're here in the NBA Finals once again, and this time we're going up against the Sacramento Kings. They got Isaiah Collier, Gary Trent Jr., Kyle Kuzma, Paolo Bancaro, and Bam Adebayo. It's a good team, man, but I think that we're better. Let's go ahead and get into this thing. Can we finally win a championship as it's one to one? Okay, two to one, us. Uh, come on, bro. Please win this thing. Please. No game seven. No game seven, man. The Cleveland Cavaliers have finally done it. Winning a championship in year number four. And Darius Garland led the way. Finals MVP, bro. 27 points, four rebounds, 16 assists, shooting 46% from deep. Come on now. You love to see it, man. I'm not going to lie. I really do wish we could have won this championship with Jared Allen. But again, I just don't think it was the right fit. Evan Mobley, to me, is better at the five spot. And I think Chris Dasworzingis was a really good pairing at the four. So we had to make some moves, man. But at the end of the day, we got that championship. I'm definitely hyped about that. And yes, I could have kept the difficulty at 50 and we probably would have won like two rings, something like that. But I do try to keep these videos realistic, man. So that's why I did that. Anyways, that's going to do it for me, man. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe. Again, we're on the road to 2K and we're almost there. So if you guys can help me out with that, I'd really appreciate it. But anyways, man, this has been TKJ. Blessings.